Countdown to kickoff continuing. Let's head out to San Francisco with Larry Beal of KGO News. Larry, how are you today? I'm better than the 49ers and their <laughs> offensive line and their quarterbacks. and their, uh, <laughs> You name a position, there's a problem. Okay, so let's start with what you started with, the quarterback. Obviously a huge problem with Alex Smith. Do the players and the organization still have faith in this guy? Well, I think Jim Harbaugh does. And, I mean, you know, Alex has been kind of a pinata in this area for seven years, ever since he was drafted number one overall, which obviously was a huge mistake by the Niners way back when, and two coaches removed in Mike Nolan. But if you watch the preseason games, uh, it's hard to blame you know, everything on Alex Smith. Um, noted uh, physics professors will tell you that it's very difficult to throw a football when there's a 300-pound guy sitting on your chest. And that's kind of the way it's been. I mean, the offensive line has been so bad in the offseason or the preseason that, you know, I mean, he's just getting drilled on every play. Same thing with Colin Kaepernick. I mean, you, by the time these guys take their drop, there's defenders in their lap. And so the offensive line, I think, is probably the biggest concern that the team has right now. Okay, because I was going to ask you, I mean, Everybody likes to point fingers at Alex Smith, and sometimes it's warranted. But in this case, it isn't really warranted. You blame number one priority, number one problem, the offensive line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Just, they, yeah there's, uh, there's, I mean, at least right now. I mean, you could look back in previous years, and you know, he actually showed signs of progress and hope when Norv Turner was the offensive coordinator of the 49ers. But, you know, we're going back you know, like four or five years at this point. And it's been injuries and regression and bad coaching and, and a whole bunch of things. So in another system, you know, if Alex Smith had the kind of thing that Peyton Manning has had where, you know, you have the same offensive coordinator for your entire career and you're nurtured and so on and so forth. I mean, we can go over a million things. It would take forever. It would be a different Alex Smith most likely. But that's not the situation. And what's really going to be a challenge is everybody in the Bay Area, Niner fans, they already have very firm opinions about Alex Smith. When he throws that first pick in whatever game it is, if it's Seattle on September 11th or against Dallas on September the 18th, fans are just going to go crazy because we've seen it so many times before. So there's no honeymoon period for him. There is for Harbaugh, but not for Alex. Let's get to the coach, Jim Harbaugh. Of course, he had a ton of success at Stanford his first year with the 49ers. What do you think he'll bring to this team? Well, I, I love Harbaugh in terms of some of the things that that they're, they're just uniquely Jim. When he was at Stanford in his first press conference, he said that he was going to bring enthusiasm unknown to mankind, <laughs> which is a, just a, a great catchphrase. And uh, he does that with the 49ers, and he's intense and you know, he's unique in his approach. But the, uh, part of the problem is sometimes the uniqueness doesn't work. Like in this last preseason game against Houston, he decided where every other coach in the league pretty much uses the third preseason game as kind of a dress rehearsal for the regular season opener. He said, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play my number two guys, like most of my backups, and see how they play because I want to really evaluate. Well, they got destroyed. This just in. The 49ers' backups are not as good as the Texans' first stringers. Okay, this is, this is the revelation. So they got annihilated. And then when they tried to mix the, the first team guys back in, it was just it was bad. It was interceptions. The, the defense couldn't do anything. Uh, you know, Matt Schaub looked like he was all world, even after throwing a pick on the first series of the game, a right. walk in touchdown. So that, okay, sometimes unconventional is not great. Sometimes. You just have to do what you have to do, which is let's see who can really play on this team. And right now, I mean, either the, the preseason is an example of the, the, the 49ers being so vanilla and intentionally so plain that they're just sandbagging and that they're, they're going to unleash fury against the Seahawks in their opener, or they're trying to get first in line for the, the Andrew Luck sweepstakes and go 2-14, and because they look 2-14 and 14 right now based on preseason. <laughs> We're going to get to the over-under question in a little bit. Let's talk about... Okay, set let's... it at 3. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about Frank Gore for a minute and his contract mm-hmm. situation. What's the latest on that, and is there hope that it'll get done before the start of the season? 
Yeah, I mean, the 49ers say they want Frank to be a 49er for life, and Frank is represented by Drew Rosenhaus. But if you were the 49ers and had to make the decision on whether to commit huge dollars to Frank Gore at this stage in his career, you'd have to say, eh, uh, you know, we love you, but, you know, he's getting up close. I think he's going to be 29 and there's a lot of mileage. I think he's the all-time, uh, third all-time leading rusher in franchise history. So he's, you know, if he was a car, he'd be coming up on about 100,000 miles, at which point you'd have to say, do I really want to plunk down 20, 30, 40 million guaranteed for a guy who's coming off of a, of a serious hip injury that cost him half of last season? The answer to that would be no. And so the Niners have to walk a fine line here. He's the key to their offense. You can't have him in the tank mentally where he's sort of living right now. Someday, even he has admitted, someday he's so frustrated he's, he's just not really there. But I, can't, I could see them doing some sort of a bridge deal. When they say 49er for life, then you have to ask, well, what do they really think his lifespan is? And you'd probably say, what, two years, three years? Frank would probably say five to six years. I don't know how they bridge that gap. Last question for you, Larry, and I know you... You gave us the answer before, so I'm just saying if you're going to change your uh, your answer. Over under is set at seven and a half wins for the 49ers. Well, when they first hired Harbaugh, I thought that they would be an eight and eight or a nine and seventeen. Looking at them in the preseason, boy, I mean seven and a half. I don't know. I can't even. No, I mean no. <laughs> Under, a very, very under. I, I don't know what, I mean, you know, four or five. And again, Harbaugh could be saving all of this. He, he could unleash a monster once the regular season begins. But when, when he says in his post-game press conference, when he talks about the offensive line and says, wow, we felt like we were violated by the Texans. <laughs> when somebody says that, it's hard to see them winning seven games. So... They were violated. Uh, are they going to be the violators once they flip the switch and the season begins for real? I No, I don't see that.